I want to sculpt a spider, but I'm also hungry, so... Bone app the teeth. Like all good dinners, this glutinous arachnid starts off as an armature of wire, bent into a spidery shape. Each limb will be loaded with pasta, so to make sure that the legs don't move or wiggle, I'm going to secure the thorax with green stuff. With the armature secured, I can bend the legs into a more spidery shape, then wind some wires around each leg so that the next layer of clay has something to hold on to. To save on the cost of clay, I'll bulk out the abdomen with some foil, secure it with painter's tape, and... Then I can add a base layer of this kind of gross flesh-colored clay. You won't see this in the final product, it's mostly just to make sure that you can't see any of the armature when we add layers of twirled pasta on top. So after it's finished, we can get that baked and start in on the noodles. I'll be making my pasta using this handy clay extruder tool. This helps me quickly get a mass of perfectly uniform thin noodles that look good enough to eat. But instead of noshing down on the toxic pasta, I'll cover my flesh spider in some liquid clay to help the noodles adhere. Then start the twizzling process, winding the strands around each limb until all the clay is covered. My end goal is to make it look as if a plate of spaghetti and meatballs gained sentience with the soul of a spider. An unearthly being bound together with the spirit of noodles. Or... something. I'm not exactly sure what the lore of a spaghetti and meatball spider would be, so I'm just rambling on until the legs are all noodled, and I can wind some clay ropes around the body and abdomen. Paying special attention to make sure that the spider butt looks like a big ball of spaghetti wound around a fork. Then I can add some stabby fangs, which are actually just leftover claws from my Demogorgon video. Really putting the tooth in al dente. Eh? Huh? Eh? Huh? Finally, I'll stick eight little pre-baked eyeballs in the face. Then we can toss our pasta spirit in the oven and start on... The most important part of the sauce are the meatballs, which start off as lumpy turds of clay that get rolled between crumpled aluminum foil to impart a meaty texture. I'll also make some little scraps of ground meat to stir into the sauce, since the spaghetti spider can only be summoned with a hearty ragu bolognese. To give our sauce flavor, we'll add some sliced translucent clay onions, which will take on a nice cooked onion look once they're baked. Then toss in some celery and tomato. I nearly forgot, but while those bake, I'll also dice up some carrots to complete our mirepoix. Then while those saute, I'll grab our fully cured spider and start in on... The noodles are still a little bit too fleshy for my taste, so to fix that I'll cover the whole thing in a hazy moon paint to make them look less like pasty skin and more like freshly cooked pasta. To give our noodle spooder some dimension and depth, I'll give the whole thing a super watery beige wash to sink into all of the crevices and cracks between the noodles, adding some richness back to the color. To make sure that the paint doesn't obscure any of the detail between the noodles, I'll give the wet paint occasional blasts with some canned air to stop the paint from gumming up in the cracks. Then to bring back some of the lightness and brighten the raised edges, I'll dry brush the whole thing with a barely off-white white. After that's dry, the fangs and eyes get painted a peppercorn black, then coated in some UV resin to make them shine like olives. Then with the noodles fully cooked, we're ready for the... This is where the flavor's at. We'll paint each of our ingredients to make them look less like chunks of clay and more like sautéed vegetables and meats. This is mostly done with heavy washes and a little bit of dry brushing to bring out the textures and liven up the colors. Then I'll whip out the secret to this sauce. Silicone caulking. This stuff is nice and clear, which makes it easy to dye with acrylic inks while still being able to see all of the lovely ingredients hidden inside. It's also thick enough to work with and mold while shaping it into a saucy, oozing texture. I'll mix in the ingredients and start ladling it over our pasta spider. A finger dipped in isopropyl alcohol will help me get the sauce smooth and liquidy, poking and prodding until it has the right shape. Then once that's shaped nicely, I can stick our meatballs in place on top. The alcohol coated the meatballs and made them a little bit slippery against the silicone. So getting them into the proper position was a bit like herding cats made of meatballs. 
Next, we can garnish our pasta deity with some parsley to add some flavor, texture, and color to the noodles. Last but not least, I wanted to incorporate webs in some way on this sculpture, so to do that, I'll dye some Fabri-Tac blue with cheese-colored paint, then string the Parmesan webs between the meatballs in sticky strands. The paint took away from some of the glue's stickiness, so I had a little bit of trouble getting the strands to adhere, but eventually I was able to get the webs looking webby, and that's actually us finished and ready for... Who doesn't like pasta that bites back? Let me know in the comments what other food creature hybrids you'd like to see next. Big thank you to my patrons on Patreon who helped me bring these wacky ideas to life. If you like this video, consider giving it a like, and subscribe to see more weird sculptures coming your way. See you next time!